Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hyperconscious Podcast. Alan, what is Hyperconscious? Once you understand why something is the way that it is, now you have the power to change it. Great conversations with great people and great questions are the keys to the kingdom of unlocking your consciousness. Every single action that you do starts as a thought. When you control the way you think, you will control the way you act, and you will control the way you live. That is hyperconscious. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hyperconscious Podcast is proudly sponsored by our friend and mentor David Meltzer of the Playbook Podcast. He was kind enough to join us on episode 144 and 135. Folks, it has become Kevin and I's mission in life to help you realize that the life of your dreams is right on the other side of you becoming the greatest version of yourself. Let us help you do that. I rarely do these things twice in such a short amount of time, but you guys impress me. I, I believe in people that provide value and of our service. You two guys are on your way to huge fulfillment, purpose, and profitability, and I look forward to helping you both. We appreciate that more than you know. gentlemen welcome back to another very special as always episode of the hyperconscious podcast we hope you enjoyed our latest five minute clinic where alan and i sat down and talked all about forgiveness that was an episode that we both kind of went uh pretty deep on so that was a very explorative episode for both of us today we are going to do a small talks episode on the word past so from talking to a bunch of listeners, to coaching clients, to my own experiences, to just talking to people in general, a lot of times people's pasts really, really control their presence. Oh, yeah. And, and their future. And their futures. And that's something that we want to talk about because your past is your past. If there is nothing you can do about something, the only thing you can do is change your association with it. It's changed the lessons you took from it. So we're going to talk about that today in our, in our Small Talks episode. So before we jump into this episode, I want to give you a friendly reminder to go to the hyperconsciouspodcast.com <laughs> and click on join hashtag hyperconsciousnation. You're going to get three hyperconscious morning minutes, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Folks, we need to be reminded of the fundamentals more than we need to be taught new things. Those videos are going to <laughs> <laughs> yes. Those videos are going to help you stay on track towards your goals and dreams and more of the outcomes that you want to see in your life. So here I'm going to define past yes. and there is a buttload. Yeah, just give us the good ones. Of definitions. So I'm going to give you the good ones. Exactly. Just okay. give us the good ones. Okay, so gone by or elapsed in time. That's number 1. Having existed in or having occurred during a time previous to the present, bygone. Okay. Um, having formerly been or served as previous or earlier. Let's do a couple other ones here. The events, phenomena, conditions that characterize an earlier historical period. That was fascinating. Right. And then the last one I'll give you here is the past tense. An earlier period of a person's life, career, that is the thought of a shameful or embarrassing nature. Now, that one in particular is interesting because, again, Kevin and I mentioned it's the meaning that you associate to the past emotionally that either drives you forward or holds you back. I mentioned to Kevin... My goodness, he is fired up. Oh, yeah. I love this <laughs> word, man. So we all have a past, a present, and a future. The past is gone. The present is the now and what you're building. And then the future is hopefully bright, and we want to make it even brighter. Now... I said to Kevin recently that in order to have a foreground, in other, in other words, a bright future, you need to have a background. And it's important for us to remember, all of us, Kevin and myself included, that at what our biggest stress is today, at one point was our wildest dreams. Yes. Kevin and I need to be reminded of that constantly because a lot of the challenges we're going through with new equipment, new coaches, new mentors, new events we're doing, all of those things at one point were just a dream. And that's one thing I want to get clear the more you succeed, the bigger the challenges will be, and we're going to help you build on your past for a brighter future, and if you're going to look in the past, make sure you're doing it to make your future brighter, because there's the other quote by Tony Robbins, if you're trying to drive into the future by looking in the rearview mirror, you're going to crash. You're going to crash, probably go head on into a tree. Right. I have a bunch of rap songs going on in my head, so okay. just a little bit of trivia before we get started. Let bygones be bygones, you can go and get the hell on you and your mama. 
What song is that from? <laughs> I have no idea. Miss Jackson by Outkast. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then for those who have been listening for a minute, you will know that I have a lot of respect and I admire Big Sean, the rapper, a lot. One thing that he respect. says in one of his songs. <laughs> 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 Pattern break. My Sorry. Goodness. One thing that he says in one of his songs is, uh, "The present is a gift. That's why they call it the present." And I think that we have to realize that. Wow. Yeah, I, I think that again, we all need a reminder of a lot of things. We need a reminder to be grateful for certain things, but we also need a reminder of maybe what you're going through right now is what you once dreamed of, mm-hmm. because it is for us. It is right. And maybe, maybe you're not there yet. Maybe you haven't got to the point where. It's what you dreamed of, but it's important to remember that when you are crawling through the crap and you do get to, you know, the future that you once you once wanted, it's because of your past. You mentioned earlier that one of your clients, you mentioned this to him on the phone, um, something about when it rains out and you get rained on. Yeah. Can you go into that? Because I think this is about your past. This is something that I have said to a lot of people when they say, yeah, you know what, I just... I've always been in bad relationships. There's nobody good out there. Everybody's shitty. Everybody lies. Everybody cheats. I say, right. the first time you walked out in the rain and you got wet, you didn't just say, well, I'm never going to go outside again because what if it rains? You get an umbrella or you check the forecast. Right. And to me, that means just do a better job of vetting the people that you give your heart to. Right. I don't think you care too much. I don't think you date bad people. I think you've made mistakes, and we all do. Oh, man. I was on the phone with a client recently, and I said that um, your power is your caring, but if you care too much about the wrong things, then that can really hurt you. Yeah. Whereas if you channel that caring in the right direction toward a brighter future, that's huge. You, we, you know what we forgot to say? What's that? So this this is uh, a Wednesday episode. Right. Uh, this will have the new intro. Right. Right. The new Dave Meltzer the new intro. Dave Meltzer intro. Yes. Interesting. Right. So ladies and gentlemen, Alan and I in this podcast is now sponsored by Dave Meltzer. Yes. Um, of the Playbook podcast. And now he is our... Mentor. So, yeah, so official coach and mentor. Guys, at, at one, one point, at that was a dream. At one point, that was just a dream. Right. That was just a dream. And it's crazy to me. that That's why I want you guys to keep doing what you're doing. And I'm so grateful that you guys are following us. Because if you heard the episode where we said, or we sat down with Dave the first time, and then we sat down with Dave the second time, you probably heard us say, we, need a, we want a mentor like Dave. We want somebody who is right. way ahead of us. Right. And now that is a thing. And it's not, you guys know it's not overnight success. You know it's not just, you know, because we quote unquote got lucky. It's because we've been working and you've been working. Mm. So shout out to you for for getting on the phone with Dave initially. I'm very proud of you and I am grateful and yeah, I couldn't do this shit without you. My Amen, man. brother. And yeah. shout out to Kevin for staying up until 2.30 in the morning yeah. working five hours on a, a new pre-roll that you guys just enjoyed at the beginning of this episode. One of the things that I also want to mention about the past is connecting the dots to where you are now. If you are happy where you've ended up, you will not only be okay with where you've been, you'll actually be thankful for it. So if you're not there, we want to get you there. Some people, Darren Hardy says this, he says people tend to use the past as this sort of like billy club that they just beat themselves over the head with. When in reality, one of the things that I wanted to bring to all of you today was this. I and Kevin have had the privilege now to really dissect the minds of world-class performers, people who are super successful and super ambitious. What I've personally found, Kevin, you can give your take on this as well, ambition usually comes from some form of a deep insecurity or trauma or pain or adversity in someone's upbringing, childhood, or even into their adulthood. And if you look at some of the stories that we featured on this podcast of Chad, Chad Robichaux, um, Brian Wood, um, even uh, Cheryl Hunter, what yeah. she went through, those traumas, those traumas that may have may may be able to be used as sort of a billy club to beat over your head. I'm not good enough, or I'm I'm. A lot of times, what they did is I remember I'll never forget this. Cheryl Hunter said this: "I want to change people's relationship to adversity." She could have used her being raped as a reason why she's not successful. Instead, she chose a more empowering meaning and came up with the wabi-sabi thing. Didn't come up with it, but like found that and realized that the reason why she is pursuing her own version of perfection is because she was at one point broken and is now far stronger for it. So what's your take on that? Because I've found that ambition and hunger that makes someone truly great 
usually comes through some form of a trauma in your past. Well, we we have a course on the website, the Pain Pleasure Pendulum, that basically says like, if you go all the way to hell no, right, you're far more likely to go all in on hell yes. And the people who, again, I'm sure if you guys are listening to this, you know somebody who maybe had it really good. Maybe they had a really good upbringing. They never struggled for anything. They never had to struggle for anything. Right. And this isn't, you know, a generalization. Maybe they they do have drive. They do have ambition. But when you don't need to have ambition, it's hard to. Right. That necessity creates desire in most cases. When you're starving to death, you have to eat. And you have to learn to hunt. Yeah. And and fend for yourself and yeah. become self reliant. One of the reasons that we did this episode is we had a, a listener reach out. I actually did a twenty minute call with him. Um, I don't know what day it was, Some sometime last week, but we were talking about his past. Right. And he said, you know, my past is controlling my every day and my future because I'm really struggling when it comes to women. Right. Because something will happen and I get flashbacks to my past. Mm-hmm. And I assume it's all happening again. And that's just, that's an unbelievably tough thing to deal with. I said, honestly, this is what I would say, man. I can help you in certain things, but I would go to therapy. Because I think that's a deep-seated thing that that has to get worked through. And again, it's a practice. That's not going to change in one day. Right. It's not, it's not as easy as me saying the rain thing. Yeah. It's not because that's deep-seated and you're making all of your decisions. That's another thing. You're making most of your decisions based on your past successes or failures. Right. Now, a question that if you're listening or watching, I want you to ask yourself is, would I be happy in five years if I looked back and I consider this part of my past. Because mm. that's how you can start controlling it now. You can start controlling your present by realizing it will be your past. part of your past eventually. Right. And you can look back and say, wow, I wasted a lot of time. Or wow, you know, I was really spending time with people who didn't care about me. Or I was doing things that didn't serve me. Or you can say, my future really shifted when I made that change. When I made that decision. When I made that shift. When I decided that, you know what? I'm going to start doing things for my future self and stop living out of my past. So I had, I've told the story about um, the car accident that I had when I was 26 and how my father passed away in a car crash when he was two and how much of uh, post-traumatic stress I kind of experienced after that. But I think what we don't talk about enough is post-traumatic growth and how much I grew from that. So Kevin, you had the story that you tell about the bed in New Jersey, like the traumas of your past can either drive you to be better and for more, to shoot for more, or they can be the reason you stay where you are. The, the, depending on how you communicate it to yourself. Yeah, it depends on the, it depends on the association you have. I could have allowed that bed in New Jersey to define me in the way of I am now broken, I am destroyed, I'm damaged, and I, I'm so afraid that's ever going to happen again. The only reason I'm doing what I'm doing, not the only, but one of the biggest reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing, and I'm taking the risks that I'm taking, and I have the ambition that I have, is so that never happens again. Right, exactly. I, it's not even a question. I will not let that happen again. Yep. I will work my fingers to the bone if I have to. I'll do whatever it takes. Right, because you know the pain of that. Yeah, and I don't ever want it again. I don't want to be a victim to that. I want that to be my cause. I want that to be the motivation that really made me Again, I decided in that moment that I'm done with this, and this is my new life now. I'm a podcaster. I'm a coach. I am a speaker. I am all these things now because I decided, and then I took action. One of our favorite quotes is, your adversity is your advantage. I'll never forget when Evan Carmichael on the podcast said the following phrase. He kind of said it in passing, but this is still to this day one of my favorite moments on the podcast. He said, if you've never suffered, you're not capable of great things. You're just not motivated enough. Human beings are, are, I mean, you can look at someone like Dave Meltzer, Evan Carmichael, Lori Harder, Chris Harder, all of the stories that we feature on this podcast, they all had this moment of, of fuck no. I cannot live this way anymore. I will not ever allow this ever again. I mean, Kim Spencer talks about like the traumas of her past yeah. and how she had to really shift the meaning she associated to them. You not having a father. Like, you could have used that as an excuse right. for why you're not successful instead of the actual reason you are. What about analogies? Ready for this analogy? Let's do it. All right, say you're standing in a tank that has water in it. Right. And this tank fills up. It fills up and it fills up, but it always stops at your waist. Always. 
and you're never worried about it going any higher than your waist, what are the chances you get out of there? It's warm water. It's comfortable water. Right. And people bring in your meals. You don't have to do anything. But if you're sitting in there and your feet are tied to the bottom and that water goes over your head one time, you're getting out of that tank, whatever it takes. And you'll make sure you never you'll end up never in another get back tank in that again. Tank. And I think that's where Fire a lot of people, analogy. analogies are Fire life. Analogy. All right, we got to get out of here because we're... Are we over? No, we're 15 minutes in. We got to get out of here though. Well, it's a small talk. So <laughs> I think we're kind of reframing what we do because the five minute clinic is going to be like at least seven minutes, probably 10. So I think small talk should be 15 to 20. Right. Scratching the surface, maybe 25 to 30. Right. And then uh, the guest reps are usually an hour, depending on the guest and depending on you know what happens. So Any, Anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour yeah. and 15. So I think that's a new way we should frame it. We wanted to do the five-minute clinic in five minutes, but it's really hard to just stop when you're in the middle of a thought, especially when we're talking about events going on. We have so many things going on right. that we want to make sure that we're communicating them with you guys because we want to see you guys in person and uh, we want you to get as much value as you can from the website and all that happy jazz. So about the listener's past, what do you want to challenge them to do that will help them move toward their brighter future? I think one of the biggest things that I find from myself and others and clients and listeners is most people are trying to run from their past or they're allowing their past to be a concrete block to hold them back. What you should do is crush that past up, put it into your gas tank, and use it as motivation. Right. You use it as something to push you forward and not keep you back. That Your past cannot affect you anymore unless you let it. Right. I the mean, story you're telling yourself about your past yeah. is what's controlling you. Yeah. Maybe you've let it define you. You know? Like, if you got laughed at by asking a dumb question, did you decide when you were 14 that you're dumb? Because right. of one moment yeah. where it was traumatic? That's the thing. The, the, reassociate the meaning. How long ago did you go back to your old memories of and, and like how is my past controlling me? And how is it empowering me? And how do I turn these negatives into positives? I think the best quote, real quick, your adversity is your advantage because it has given you the emotional training ground to develop the emotional muscle to go out and do extraordinary things that ordinary people simply cannot do. That's a Darren Hardy quote that I always try to live by because I think that's one of the reasons why you and I are driven so so much is because of the difficulties and the challenges. Not We're not held back by those anymore. Well, I feel free of them. I do too, and I was just going to say, it might be, if you're watching this or if you're listening to this, you might think to yourself, well, it's easy for you guys to say that is actually your past. That's, actually, that's what I'm currently going through. If, right. if that's the case then it's time for you to make some changes. And I don't know what those changes are for you, but get around people who believe in you. Um, go see a therapist. Have a tough conversation with your mother, father, sister, brother, uncle, your lover, whoever it is. Like, Figure out what you can really do in this moment to put this into your past. And again, it's, it's funny, man. I am very much over the things in my past. And I want you, if you're watching this or listening this, to get to the same point where right. if you put a time machine in front of me right now, I wouldn't go back and change anything. Right. I couldn't. I wouldn't be the man I am today. We wouldn't be sitting here if I did. You're grateful for your past now, even yeah. the traumatic stuff, because yeah. you're so happy with where you've ended Speaking up. Speaking of grateful, uh -huh, ladies yes. and gentlemen, up next we are going to do a Scratching the Surface episode on grateful dissatisfaction. So Alan and I have been trying to put this into words for a long time about how you can be enjoying the journey, but also realize you need to get far better along the journey. Right. And that is what grateful dissatisfaction is. We are grateful for what is, but we are dissatisfied with our current level of skills, results, and everything because we know we are capable of so much more. Right. You can be grateful for what is while also pursuing more, but you have to have some level of dissatisfaction with what is in order to have the fire in your heart to really go for more. And that's the huge thing. I think I'm going to ask Kevin a bunch of questions on this next one. I'm looking forward to it. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed this, and we will talk to you on the next one. Talk to you soon. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for listening to another episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. Going hyperconscious will absolutely change your life because if you understand why something is the way it is, now you have the power to change it. If you going hyperconscious with us has changed your life in any way, please share this episode with one of your friends because the more people that go hyperconscious, the better this world's going to be for everybody. And if you would kindly leave us a five star review on iTunes, that would help us make more people hyperconscious and we would be greatly appreciative. Thank you. Bye.